Mr. Krabs has daddy issues. Let me explain. Hello there. Welcome to yet another episode of Beneath the Ocean Surface, where I analyze the dark side of SpongeBob's characters and their major flaws. So who is Mr. Krabs? What is his vice? Well, to me, he personifies relationship problems with his friends, his girl, and ultimately his daughter, because his major flaw is imbalance, a major instability between his love for everyone else and his one true love money. Yup, it wouldn't be a Mr. Krabs video if I didn't at least mention it. But actually on this channel, we dig deeper. So let's talk about how his childhood poverty and trauma shaped him into a crab who struggles with maintaining relationships. In friend or foe, Krabs is introduced as a poor kid by the name of Ragboy. Maybe, perhaps due to the fact that he wears rags. But it is clear that Eugene and his mom is not in a great position in life. He's poor, impoverished, and indignant. Now if we look into why, I think it's quite clear. He has no dad. So it's just his mom and him. So without another provider, they grew up poorer than the rest of the kids in the show. And he grows up into a crab, refusing to go back to poverty. Another important figure is introduced early on. Plankton, his best friend and eventual business partner. They went through everything together and are obviously close because they are the societal rejects in their school. Yep, it's almost Shakespearean the way they broke up as they tragically split up after murdering an old man. I would say this affects how he handles friendships from now on, as we don't see anyone become that close to him again. We also see See where his love for money comes from. We'll see him gawk at the stacks of money Stinky has. He's seeing a lifestyle he wishes to live. He sees what money can buy, freedom, and power. And as Stinky represents what Krabs will eventually become, his new love for money represents the security he needed from his childhood. And we see that he just never builds up a relationship that makes him feel quite as good with money with anyone else save Pearl. So this Krabs' childhood leads us to ask three distinct questions about how he maintains relationships. How does he balance friends with money after Plankton's betrayal? How does he balance money with his newfound love? And how does he balance being a good dad with loving money? So this episode begins with Krabs rubbing money on his Krabussy. Well, to be accurate, his one millionth dollar. And so since it's been his dream and we've seen his childhood, he wanted to celebrate with a clam fishing trip. Now, after being on the boat for a little bit fishing and all, SpongeBob rips off Mr. Krabs' pants. Pause. Hold on, not like that. And he makes a giant clam yank Mr. Krabs' millionth dollar into the ocean, under the ocean, I'm not, I'm not sure. And he um cra kinda crashes out, I don't know. Now because his employees are pretty loyal, they stay for three days. And after they decide that Krabs is obviously tweaking, they betray him, in his eyes. And this is where Mr. Krabs shows his absolute disdain for betrayal. His hypersensitivity to those possibly leaving him really proves Plankton's betrayal really had its effect. Now I won't pretend Mr. Krabs is a perfect boss, but at times he is a friend or friendly, but we see how he struggles maintaining a friendly relationship when money is involved. Like when he sells Spongebob's soul for 15 cents or work them for like 80 days straight, damn. But anyways, after their supposed betrayal, he really breaks down. We see the effect his money addiction and subsequent withdrawals has on him. And once Spongebob and Squidward try to escape again, he threatens their life and uses them as bait. He has truly lost it, and in his greed, he lost his humanity, or crabanity, whatever. And after scaring his employees, he gets his dollar, but it literally cost him an arm and a leg. Now I focus on this episode because it goes as far as literally threaten their lives and his mental breakdown is surprisingly well thought out. We see the lunacy devolve into active terror as he just crashes out over a dollar. So besides the greed and old emotions coming up, ultimately this episode shows how money affects his closest relationships and how he struggles balancing them against his one true love. We also see this in the episode, Crusty Love. Now this episode begins with Krabs noting a fine underwater specimen, Mrs. Puff. He's starstruck. He fumbles his words and acts super awkward around a woman. He's just like me. Her beauty leaves him more captivated than money. And we see this as he manages to spend $100,000 on their first date. He cries as he now realizes 
he's on a leash. And this is where we first see his inner conflict as he makes Spongebob in charge of his own money to save money on his second date and as we see he immediately fumbles as he asks Spongebob to get flowers to impress Mrs. Puff. And right after that short term appeasement he blames Spongebob and it goes like that for a bit. We see this again and again. We see him show his immense love for Mrs. Puff and his immense disdain for spending a lot of moolah. We have to remember he has likely never felt this way for a fish before unless you really believe he boinked a whale. Please lad, I'm begging you. I'm a lonely old crustacean who's found love. Don't let me lose her. Now if the episode clams reflects the lengths he'd go to to appease his greedy side, then this episode reflects the lengths he'd go to to appease his closest relationships. Namely, he shows signs of an insecure attachment style. Now in psychology, attachment styles describe how we interact in our relationships. Think secure style is healthy, balanced relationships. Insecure style is we think the other person's gonna leave us for literally no reason. Very simplified, but let's just go with it. Some signs Crab shows of this is the anxiety he has about not keeping Mrs. Puff happy happy. And the money he spends kind of shows this. Another is avoidance of close relationships. Now if we really look at him, he really only has his mom and Pearl. Generally, when it comes to his mother and father figures, he wants to constantly appease them as if they're gonna boil him alive if they don't like him. And this directly influences his one romantic relationship in the show. Next, we should explore his closest relationship with his daughter in... So Mr. Krabs' fat ass is calling a meeting to announce his daughter Pearl is going to be working and ordering them around like slaves. So Pearl arrives and changes everyone's fit to these ugly ass Met Gala looking uniforms. Kind of upgraded Squidward's fit. She also changes the restaurant from the Krusty Krab to the Cuddly Krab, which I admit is kind of coral. Anyway, Squidward gets fined for public indecency, Spongebob has to make the ocean's equivalent of British food, and then finally Spongebob has to wear the corpse of Mr. Krabs' dad. Alright, at the time of recording this, I found out his dad is actually alive. Yup, season 12, the episode Senior Discount, we find out he is alive and he looks like this. Yep, that is his dad. I don't know why he looks older than his grandpa, but anyways, that is what he looks like. And that means he was just absent in his life, which kind of makes everything about Mr. Krabs make just a little bit more sense. Anyways, Mr. Krabs realizes he has to fire his own daughter. And this is where we see another inner conflict, his greedy side versus the love for his daughter. And fortunately, he actually loves his daughter more and decides to get SpongeBob to fire her. But Pearl wants to quit anyways, so everything works out in the end. But wait, this episode reflects the lengths he'd go to for his daughter slash adopted daughter because I refuse to believe he really boinked a whale. I refuse. But anyways, this episode highlights how Pearl makes him forsake his greedy side. Now I am aware there are a lot of episodes where he's pretty stingy with his money. Like that time Pearl was having a sleepover and he only gave him ketchup and crackers for snacks. That was just foul. But it's clear he has a hard time telling her no. Like her asking for an expensive birthday or spending all of the Krusty Krabs' profit to make everything pink for some reason. So Mr. Krabs is a complicated crab with an innate greedy sense of self that makes it hard to maintain friendships and a healthy relationship. And with his dad's absence, he grew up insecure, fueling his need for a rich image and a people-pleasing behavior with his closest relationships, likely from his fear of being abandoned yet again. Or it was just never that serious, I don't know. Thank you for watching to the end of this video. I am so sorry this video took forever. Um, essentially what happened was college, you know. Of course y'all wouldn't know this, but I am in college, so whenever I uploaded my last video, that's when assignments and tests really ramped up for some reason. Yeah, I will definitely next semester be taking less classes. I really should not have done that, especially when I decided to start a YouTube channel. Anyways, I think this next video will get your attention. I will be proving the SpongeBob Femboy Theory. That's right, I will be explaining why I think Spongebob is a femboy. So stay tuned if that sounds interesting. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. Have a nice night.